Greetings and welcome back to my studio. It's time for a recap of the wood firing that I did with my wild clay. I've got all my wild clay adventures finally coming to coming to the grand finale here of having finished pots. The, um, the there was the I, I had the idea that I would film the the wood firing process, which is really exciting and would be a lot of fun. But there's only four of us that fire the wood fired kiln at the um, at the community college and it gets kind of fast and furious and the idea of trying to navigate stoking the kiln and, and managing the cameras and all that was just more than I could deal with. So what I'm doing instead is a little recap of the successes and maybe not quite so terrific things that, that came out of the firing, things I learned, um, things that, um, that I need to consider for moving forward and how to use this clay the limitations, um, pluses, minuses, you know, all of those things, you know, and, and so what's, you know, what, what's it going to look like um, moving forward with this? So um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll show you each of the, the pieces and some of the things I love and my favorite pieces and this, uh, we'll take a closer look. So be right back. I made test tiles in my wild clay. This was to test the shrinkage and the absorption rates. And then I placed them in the front, the middle, and the back of the kiln. And then I broke them in half, and that's to look at the reduction in the uh, reducing the oxygen and carbon absorption in the clay. And that's something that I need to consider going forward. And I love these little rustic little dishes. I think they'll be great for incense or holding little treasures. They've got the um, the cobalt wash on them, so that makes them with the interact with the salt, and it turns this kind of metallic black almost, which I just love. And they're just you know rustic and funky and useful. And this one's kind of an experiment for me. I saw something similar online and decided to try it out for myself, just for my own use. And it's a votive, votive candle holder. And it's um, supposed to have this little, nice little dish that sits on top. And the idea is you put a wax melt that has uh, essential oils in there, and then it acts like a diffuser only the top doesn't sit really well on the base and while I like them separately, I'm not quite so keen on them together. And this is my least successful piece in the firing. This is my butter dish. And while the top is fine, the base is a bit of a mess. The, um, I made it too small. It cracked because of the carbon coring issues. The wads, a couple of them broke off and fused to the glaze. The bottom warped and <laughs> it cracked. It's just got multiple issues and is really just a mess. And while I do like this form and I plan to revisit it, um, this one, this one really is just a bit of a disaster. Oh well. But one of the pieces that was successful with Little Boxes is a cone incense holder, which I really love. And this has a nice little indentation in the top for the cone incense, and then nice glaze on the inside. And then I put a hole there, so I'll put a piece of copper wire and epoxy that on one side, and it really holds the lid nice and secure. And it's a, just a great, useful little box. And one of my favorite pieces, this was intended to be for olive oil and just like a little cruet. And I love this form. It's got the little indentations there to hold on to. The lid turned out really well. The, none of the wads stuck, you know, it, it pours pretty well. The, you can see the clay body there and the, the wads for stacking. And it's just, it's a little slab built construction and um, I just I'm just I love this little piece and hopefully I'll use it you know time will tell we'll see but it's a great form and I really do love these little dishes the little pedestal dishes and that uh, uh, the glaze that's on the inside of all of these is something it's called spodumene 
and it's just this nice sort of not quite matte but pretty close ochre color and it reacts beautifully with the wood and the salt firing and I, I only made a couple of these but I'll definitely be making more I love these little pieces and of course I always love my little pinch pots this one had some nice sort of craggy look had a nice craggy look to it where because I work the clay pretty dry and you know I, I do love that and um, just you know just real rustic and then with the Port Townsend beach glass in the in the bottom and one of the little pedestal forms that I just again that's just one of my favorite new forms and with the beach glass I think it's just lovely and just the the glaze you know just the way it reacts beautiful and my little creamers or pourers that's a hard word to say um, this has been a, a terrific form it's been really well received by folks on my on my website and um, the with the little extra details of the, the coils to give the to make those pour spouts and they they just feel really nice in the hand you know they um, they're very tactile and you know again I love that surface with the um, from the cobalt oxide and interacting with the with the salt and this one was a little more complex I used a, a little slab for the pour spout and then it's kind of got a little cut out there but again it just feels really nice in the hand and it's um, it's it's just a really sweet little pot and of course my favorite is my teapot this is the first tea well I, this is the second teapot I made the first teapot I threw away but this one you know again a little bit of a disaster it had a piece of the wadding fall off and fuse inside and I'll have to grind that out it doesn't pour really well, but it'll be okay for me. And then I'm going to use this terrific uh, stick that I branch that I found out in our wood pile that had a vine on it, and I'll cut that down and epoxy it in to use for the handle. But um, again, feels really nice. So that's it for for all of my little pots. I think I I think I had some some really great little pieces come out of the kiln and I'm you know quite pleased overall the um, the next thing is um, fingers crossed everything is going to be um, hoping to, to be collecting my the bricks for my for my own wood fired kiln here and it's keeps getting postponed we've been talking about getting bricks since January and now here it is the middle of June and I, I've got some, but you know, not all of the bricks that I need to build the kiln. And um, you know, being, like I said, fingers crossed. You know, here in the next week or so, I'm hoping to collect the rest of the bricks, and then that'll be the next big chapter in this whole adventure of wild clay and and just doing everything off my land. That's um, I think that's it for now. And thanks again for watching and helping me as I continue tending my handmade life. Really appreciate you following me along. Thank you. Blessings.